Coming up on DITV, another Democratic presidential candidate stops by Iowa City. We'll tell you who it was. And later, the analytic council responds to an inappropriate social media post by a University of Iowa sorority member. We'll give you the details. Well, the odds were not in the O-line's favor on Saturday against Michigan. We have more on the offensive line struggles in just a few minutes. Good morning and happy Tuesday, Hawkeyes. Your weather for today is going to be nice and sunny all day. I'll tell you more about the weather for today and for the rest of the week coming up. All that and more coming up on this Tuesday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. We start right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Lauren Burrell. Democratic presidential candidate Camila Harris was in Iowa yesterday and commented on the Ukrainian controversy. Harris was in Ames where she met with Iowan residents before attending a Moms Demand Action meeting. Harris still found the time to talk to the media and give her take on the presidential candidate opponent, Joe Biden, involvement with the scandal. I've said many times that on this issue of Ukraine, uh, leave Joe Biden alone because I really do believe to, to go down that road is to fall into the trap that the president has laid, which is to manipulate um, the power of the president and the relationships that we have with allies like Ukraine in a way that has been about his personal and political benefit. And so I don't, I'm not going to get duped into having that conversation. I, just let's leave Joe Biden alone. This was part of a campaign trip that included visiting an elementary school, eating dinner with a local family, and more. A University of Iowa sorority member is under fire after an inappropriate comment on social media. Over the weekend, a member of Kappa Kappa Gamma commented on the commented join the KKK on an Instagram post of the Kappa Kappa Cam Gamma sorority members dressed in white. The Beta Zeta chapter of the sorority responded by sharing a statement saying, quote, Kappa Kappa Gamma strongly values diversity and inclusion among our membership, and we encourage our members to demonstrate an understanding of these values, both on the college campus and in the world community, end quote. The University of Iowa Panaletic Counselor also responded to the situation by saying, quote, as a council, we will be assessing how to better educate our women women in the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion with our panaletic community. This action has forced us to re-examine how we address these issues and how to prevent these intolerable situations from happening in the future." End quote. The UI Greek, Greek system is drafting a strategic plan to create a positive culture change in fraternity and sorority life, including aligning the Greek community with the university, university's diversity, equity, and inclusion action plan. Another Democratic presidential candidate visited Iowa City last night in an attempt to win votes. Cory Booker is a polling at the national average of 1% and nearly dropping out at the end of some out, nearly dropping out at the end of September. But his campaign was saved by a $2 million fundraising effort. Booker spoke about the importance of not only winning the election, but leading the country. The challenge this day and age is not one guy in one office. Let me tell you, I hear from pundits all the time, the most important thing the Democrats want from a candidate is someone who can beat Donald Trump. And my response to them always is, my response always is, is can't we have bigger aspirations than that? <laughs> Booker's next stop on the Cam train trail is Bone, Iowa. Tensions are continuing to rise in Washington, D.C. as reports of a second whistleblower are beginning to surface. The president is in hot water after it was revealed by an unidentified CEA officer that Trump had been secretly communicating with Ukraine. The officer reported that the Ukrainian government was investigating 2020 presidential candidate Joe Biden, hoping to find dirt that would impact the upcoming election. Over the weekend, the legal team representing the CIA officer announced that they are now working with multiple clients on the case. The second whistleblower is reported to be an intelligence official directly connected to the president's Ukrainian relations. 
Trump was taken to Twitter, describing the situation as secondhand information. We will continue to bring you updates on the whistleblowing reports as they unfold. Walking into the studio, it was for sure feeling like fall. I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Kate with updates on those temperatures. Weather for this fine Tuesday is going to be bright and sunny all day. This morning, temperatures will be in the mid to high 50s, and as we get into the afternoon, temperatures will slowly rise into the higher 60s. In the evening, temperatures will come back down into the high 50s. For the rest of the week, you will not experience sunny skies like you will today. On Wednesday, there will be partly cloudy skies with the high being in the upper 60s and the low being in the mid 50s. On both Thursday and Friday, rain is to be expected with colder temperatures to follow suit. On Saturday, you can expect some cooler temperatures with partly cloudy skies. As you start your Tuesday in the sunshine, you won't experience sunny skies like this anytime for the rest of the week. A student service is celebrating its 100th year on campus. 2019 marks Student Health Centennial. Student Health is a ser student service that provides a comprehensive care for the well-being of students. Student Health's main location is on the west side of campus, but they also have an office in the IMU for students to visit for flu shots and quick service. Student Health estimates that it's giving care to around 3 million students since 1919. That sure sounds like a lot of care. I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to sports to talk about the game on Saturday. Thanks, Lauren. And football is a game of numbers. And, well, the numbers were not in Iowa's favor against Michigan. DITV sports reporter Lucy Rodine has more on the numbers that went wrong for the Iowa offense. <laughs> Iowa heard that call eight times against the Wolverines. Eight sacks is first off just unacceptable. We got to play better as O-line and as a unit. Um, just in Michigan, came ready to play. Um, no line needs to step up and uh, we need to play better. I had to get the ball out. Um, you know, some I, I took probably too many sacks today. She just swung the ball away, uh, you know, cut, cut the losses, uh, you know, on some of those. But, uh, you know, they did a lot of things as far as games and, and pressures that, that were really hard for us to pick up. But it wasn't just hard on Stanley in the passing game. And for rushing yards? Well, that was it for Iowa. The Hawks only managed to gain one rushing yard against the Wolverines. Just us. I mean, it was a, it was a tough team, tough, tough environment. Our first big test, so I may have to figure it out. And Iowa's going to have to figure it out with their second big test of the year coming this weekend against an undefeated Penn State team. You know, it's going to be hard, you know, get this taste out of our mouth, but um, we, we got to do what we got to do. We got to move on um, as, as tough as it's going to be. You know, and we got another opponent next week. It's not like the season's going to stop or anything. Reporting from Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Lucy Rodine, DI TV Sports. We'll have more from the football team tomorrow about rebounding from Michigan and looking ahead to Penn State. But the Iowa baseball team hosted the North Iowa Com Area Community College Trojans on Friday at Dwayne Banks Field, and they showed them no mercy with a 10-1 victory. In their second 14-inning game this fall, the Hawks kept their defense strong and their offense stronger, only allowing the Trojans one earned run. Junior Brett McCleary set the scene for the offense and went three for four on the night with a double and a jab. Freshman Andrew Nord went two for three with a home run and two RBIs, and junior Isaiah Fuller came through with a double. The Hawks cycled through 10 different pitchers with five each striking out three batters. You can catch the Hawks in action again as they host Indian Hills Community College tomorrow at 3. And that's all we have for you in the sports studio today. Check back tomorrow to hear what the football team has to say about Penn State this weekend. Lauren, back to you. It's spooky season, so someone called Ghostbusters. A Pittsburgh Italian restaurant is crawling with ghosts. Check out the decorations that Angelo's 2 Italian restaurant put up south of Pittsburgh. You've got those creepy green tentacles and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Mans from the Ghostbusters. Kids are loving it. One parent said his child made him drive around the building 15 times. The restaurant takes the holiday decorating very seriously during Christmas and an oversized Santa peeps from the roof and the facade turns into an evergreen tree. Those who make it to my apartment will definitely not see that. Thank you for tuning in this Tuesday morning. Have a wonderful day, Iowa City.